Members of the City Council, please attend a call meeting of the City Council to be held in the sixth floor conference room, 801 Crawford Street, 6 p.m., Monday, April 8, 2013, for the purpose of a public work session. In addition, you may consider a motion to go into closed meeting by order of the mayor. Mr. Cherry? Here. Mr. Edmonds? Here. Mr. Meeks? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Ms. Randall? Here. Mayor Wright? Here. Mr. Rowe? Thank you, Deborah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's another great day in this city of Portsmouth. <laughs> the first item, we have really just two items on the agenda tonight. Uh, briefing uh, by our General Assembly delegation on this last session of the General Assembly and then uh, work session on the budget. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, Delegate Johnny Joanno and Delegate Matthew James. Uh, Senator Lucas was coming but at the last minute had a conflict and she sends her uh, regrets okay. and uh, she had, she apologized for the uh, the conflict. And so now that the General Assembly has really adjourned uh, in keeping with uh, a tradition where we thank our General Assembly delegation, uh, first I personally thank uh, the work that Matthew and Johnny did and Louise and Senator Blevins. That, that place is a madhouse. It's a pressure cooker and things are cha ever changing. And uh, our delegation brought home the bacon. And so it would be good for you to hear that from them without any filter from us. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Who's first? Senora or beauty? Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> they happen to be both, right? Oh. <laughs> I hadn't had a chance to read it all. <laughs> you want to go ahead? Uh, sure. Sure. It's my pleasure to be here this morning, and and, and I'll be my usual brief stuff. It was a uh, uh, really this uh, morning. We had about forty four hundred this morning. This morning, this morning. Yeah. 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 We were quite tired, but we had about uh, uh, 4,000 bills, and about 1,500 of those actually got passed. So if you've been up there, it is a, like and it's it, it is a very quick process. And then the governor uh, on, mon on the veto session came in, and he basically had uh, six vetoes and 85 amendments to his bill. So I'll just go over some of the brief things. We were successful, however. Be here till one. Oh, no, you will not be here till one. No, Johnny may keep you till one, but I will be, I will be going home. Uh, just joking. We got to have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, I had several bills. I had a pretty good uh, 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 workload this time. We were successful in getting a unanimous vote on the city charter bill, which you requested. We also had a, a, a voluntary economic growth sharing agreement with the uh, Port of Virginia and the infrastructure development zone. Importantly, that's the kind of bill that I really embrace because what it basically does, without going into the details, uh, it allows any of the 32 cities that are in that group, they can now enter into a joint revenue agreement on a new project or an expansion without coming back to Richmond for, for our approval. So if you decide as a council that you have a project that they want to do revenue sharing with the city of Suffolk, for example, you don't have to come back to Richmond for approval. You can work it out with the two councils. And I think those kinds of agreements work well. And it's just another way that we can give an economic development tool to the economic development staff of the cities because, as you all know, I'm a firm believer in all good, most of the good decisions are made locally. And so that's one that we're going to try to get out of the way, and I think that that's a good one. We also, I also was a patron with a, a couple of, a, and co-patron with a couple of bills to uh, introduce a 120-day uh, hearing period for any future public-private partnership act. So no city is forced in the city situation that we are in. And I, I co patron that with Chris Jones. We also, I try my best to have a lot of toll mitigation things coming up. Uh, Kenny and Mayor, and you came up and you saw me in rules defending, uh, trying to get them to study best practices and some things. We got two things that are being studied. 
and I'm sure uh, uh, Sherry will contact you. The bill that we introduced on the income tax deduction for, for tolls is being studied by the uh, tax commission. They met on Tuesday. It's now on a subcommittee. They will contact you or some members from Portsmouth to come up and actually testify. The genesis of that bill is it would allow residents at a certain income level to apply for a tax credit for the money they pay for tolls if the tolls are in place. We're trying to do whatever we can to ease that burden on pop certain populations. As you all know, we had a couple of meetings. Uh, I had a couple of meetings in Grove Baptist and with a lot of folks, and we're trying to do a lot of things uh, with the state uh, in addition to the other things that are happening. We also, uh, they also agreed to study on, in a transportation committee what some of the best practices are. That's going to be an informal <laughs> study. And the other economic development bill that uh, I work with the economic development directors is we're trying to get more money for the enterprise zone. Right now, the enterprise zones are going to be shrunk down to 32 statewide, and there's not enough money to be effective. What we're going to do is convene some uh, groups around the state economic development folks and, and interested parties and try to come up with a bill to expand the number of zones and to attach a budget amendment to that so that if we get more money, we can diversify that. <coughs> we also had a bill uh, on machinery and tool equipment for the community college so that now a company that wants to contribute some equipment to the community college can get a state write-off. In addition, and we think that that'll get more uh, things in the community college worked well with us on that one. And uh, last but not least, we worked on uh, something I think that'll be helpful with the school divisions is we have a bullying bill. We're defining what bullying is and those types of things. That's just a snapshot of some of the things that I worked on. Uh, it was a big, big <coughs> session. The biggest thing that we worked on was um, I'm sure you read about that in the paper was transportation bill. For the first time in 27 years, we have a transportation bill. Uh, I supported the bill, and uh, those of you who saw the first committee it came to was finance committee. And uh, I was one of the bipartisan members who voted for that bill to get it out of committee. Uh, otherwise, it might not have passed and it would have died. And I felt that we needed to do something. It, it wasn't the perfect bill. But we needed to have something importantly, and if you want to talk about that, we were able to put in a local option for Hampton Roads. And now the TPO has the job of figuring out how that money should be spent. But it should, the local option alone should generate in excess of $120 million year one. So we have a revenue stream. And importantly, all of the money that is raised in Hampton Roads has to stay in Hampton Roads because the bill has a has a poison pill at the end. And if any of that money gets spent on something that's not authorized, that local option goes away. So I think we, we finally have something for transportation. We've been trying to work hard on that. And um, that's a good overview. I don't know if Johnny wants to pick up. Johnny's uh, on the budget conferee. He can probably tell you all the good stuff. Some, one of my biggest disappointments was the fact that I had a bill that would have uh, uh, restored the voting rights of uh, nonviolent felons. Uh, it was uh, heard in subcommittee. It was quite interesting. The administration supported my bill. The attorney general supported my bill. The bill was defeated in subcommittee. So. We're going to keep pushing that. There are people talking to the governor now. Maybe he can do that as executive order. I don't know. Uh, the other big bill that a lot of people have talked about as I travel in civic leagues is the voter ID bill. Uh, if they're going to vote in November, everybody, and I'm sure the registrar will do a great job, but the voter ID bill did pass, and they will have to show that ID. Uh, otherwise, they will have to be doing a provisional ballot. And those are some of the things. But we're real busy. We got a lot of comp we got a lot of uh, conversation. Uh, I want to thank the people from Portsmouth that came up to visit me. Uh, we had a lot of young people who I personally like coming up there because they get a kick out of it, and uh, uh, you know, especially the fact that one young man uh, he came down and sat at my seat, and he said, "Delegate, I don't understand." You guys get to do everything that they tell us we can't do at school. You get to eat at your desk, <laughs> and you get to all this stuff. Because if, if you go down there, we keep snacks and stuff. Food. And he said, so maybe I can go. How old do I have to be to be a delegate? So, but it was fun. We had a good time. So if there are any questions? The Mayor? transportation bill, is it true in five years we're supposed to have $3.5 billion in Hampton Roads? Is that what that 
equates up to? Yes. Yes. Secondly, what about education? You didn't mention anything about that. How do we fare with education this time around? I think the education was fully funded. The, 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 the disturbing part for me was not necessarily just the money and the funding. Uh, the state, the administration continues to want to institute certain things and taking money away from public schools. And I'm not opposed to alternatives, but if you're going, unless you fully fund public schools, why are you going to try this other things? Uh, I do think in the veto session, the opportunity act, which would have been more of a, in my mind, a, it would have given the state the ability to uh, take over failing schools was not passed. Uh, they wanted to put some seed money into that, and that was not passed. Uh, now, he, the administration may do that from a executive order standpoint, but I think in terms of funding, you know, Johnny, this is going to scare me, I'm, a, I'm sounding like Johnny Joanno. Money is tight in Richmond. <laughs> and I think we got as much money as we could uh, for the schools. Certainly I would have liked to have gotten more. Uh, but my bigger issue is the fact that I still don't think we're trying to go into several solutions before we are drilling down and fixing the problem. One of the things that I really enjoyed, and I didn't talk about that one, was we've uh, set up several um, several bills that will allow us to do uh, things like STEM programs and uh, apprenticeship construction programs and embed those into public schools uh, on a, on a uh, regional basis. But I think the budget in terms of public schools was probably as good as it's going to get right now until the economy comes. If you, I don't want to take you too much into the economy, but the reason our, the economic indicators are lagging, we need about 12 more months of solid growth. And then I think you'll see some much more funding of the school divisions coming out of this budget. And depending on how it works next year, we may have some more money to give to schools. But I would tell you this, Mayor and the rest of Council, that there is a sentiment uh, among some of the legislators that they want to make sure that there's, if there's going to be an increased money <coughs> of funding level, they want some accountability to. So that's coming down the pike. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so just for a moment, I, yes, I must have missed something when you were talking about the Enterprise Zone. Yes. Uh, what is the state of that? Uh, right now, what the Enterprise Zones are, uh, we did not, I pulled the bill. What what I was tasked to do by several of my cities, especially Suffolk, was right now the Enterprise Zones were created in 1960. And they started out being fully funded. Now you have a situation where if you go to Patrick Small, your economic development director, he can tell you that we a business that locates in the Enterprise Zone probably based on the state budget is reimbursed no more than 65% of what they are eligible to get because it doesn't have the funding stream. And so what has happened over time is uh, cities that have older zones, the zone application is worth, is good for 30 years. So after the 30 years, it's not renewed. And so the number of zones have gone down and I think by in the next two or three years, they're going to drop down to 32 zones statewide. And so other cities like Suffolk has said, instead of doing a citywide criteria for an enterprise zone, why don't you do a census track criteria? So what we want to do, what I want to do, what I intend to do is, is pull together a work group of economic development folks from urban cities, rural cities, small cities, and say, let's come up with a policy or a, a new bill that will work because it's one of the incentives that really work for small businesses and attach it to a budget amendment. And if the budget amendment does not increase the funding, then you don't do the expansion. But it's a way, right now, the biggest challenge with getting uh, the, in my opinion, enterprise zones, bills, and increased funding passed is because the constituency group is shrinking. I mean, one of the first things that I learned when I got in the General Assembly is, it's great to be up there because you got one vote. The reality of it is you need 50 other people to agree with you to get anything done. And if you only got 32 people on your side, it's not gonna pass, no matter how good it is. 
So that's our strategy to get more funding. And uh, we've gotten some good, we've gotten a uh, commitment from the administration, the Virginia Economic Development Partnership, a lot of stakeholders, and we're right now looking at several dates in which we can meet to discuss that. And if you're interested in that, that's fine, because I think that's one of the best small business incentives that we have going, in my opinion. Any other questions for Delegate James? <coughs> Delegate, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, one, the voter ID thing I, I hear more and more. Is there something we can do on our public television to get it out to the public about uh, making sure they know the new law? The answer is yeah, yes. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what wasn't part of that? Aren't they in the state going to provide some boots to, to the registrars to, to provide IDs? That's my understanding. That's so, 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 which is another problem for us, where are we going to put it at? Mm -hmm. uh, Might be a well, nice little PCTV show. And I was thinking the same thing. Put Ms. Short on to explain what it is. And I have a team looking at uh, the space uh, needs for the uh, registrar. Dolores is really hurting for space. And so this I've got to make it even worse. Sir. <laughs> this is going to make it even worse well, when, it, when, it bring this, when it bring this photo ID booth there. In but I. Takes up space. Yes, We're working hard to get. She's touched base, I think, with a few of us yes, and, yes. and really uh, yeah. showed us she's what correct. she's confronted yeah. with. And she definitely Some needs additional yeah. space. Yeah. And we're working hard to get that. Okay, good. Okay. And to get it here in this building. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. That'd be essential. Delegate? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Just very briefly, uh, we started off, uh, Governor Wilder, some years back, set up a, a rainy day fund. <clears throat> and if it wasn't for that rainy day fund, we wouldn't have had enough money for the past four years to fund every project that we've been trying to fund. And so we got to pay some of that money back. <clears throat> and this year what we did was we added $50 million to the $45 million that we were putting back in there. We owe $370 million is going to be required to be put in in 2014, 2016. That's how much we're short right now. But we'll be putting... <clears throat> At least we got 95 million in there from this year, which is 25, uh, roughly about 25 percent of it. So uh, we should be in fairly decent shape next year. At least I hope we are, so that we can get the rest of that money in there. Because the rainy day fund is uh, we use it for schools and everything else when we don't have <coughs> sufficient funds, and we take it out. You can't take out but so much. And so uh, that's what we've been doing the last three, four years. And so now it's time to start trying to get it all back in there. Uh, <coughs> state supported uh, and local employees and uh, college facility are going to get a 3% pay raise in 2014. Uh, we had started off with a 2,000, uh, with a 2% raise, and then we went in for an additional 1% safety adjustment um, in the session after after the compromise took place in the conference committee we went to 3% from 2% um, and that's basically for state employees and college facilities when we got to the uh, a resolution in conference with regard to the budget bill <coughs> Uh, I've got a bunch of numbers and figures here, but um, for example, faculty, judges, and state support locals at additional 1%. So we're giving those 1%, even though judges in general district court handle local matters as well as state matters. And that was one of the issues that had come up. Um, One of the biggest things that we had this session was Medicaid. And what happened on Medicaid was uh, whether you, we set up the service program or we go with a federal program. You're talking about the expansion now, Medicaid expansion program, okay. The expansion <coughs> part of it. Um, what's happened is uh, the Medicaid expansion program there are about four to 500,000 more people in Virginia that might be eligible. Um, and so the position sent the uh, House and Senate took was to say, okay, what we'll do is we'll have a federal program to see whether or not 
<clears throat> the feds are going to pay for this since they passed it. The problem is that if the money is not there and we set up a state program, service program, then we're going to be responsible for that. And if the feds don't pay, then we have to come up with the money or tell the people, I'm sorry, you have to do away with the program. Uh, personally, I don't want to have to tell anybody we're going to have to do away with the program once we initiate it. And so that's why we are going very carefully and we've set up a process which will handle that. Uh, I have to be on the committee. We haven't met yet, but I'm assigned to a committee that will be handling uh, that portion of it. Uh, Where's the governor at on that? I know he, he agreed with you before the budget was approved that he would entertain it and then flipped afterwards? No, he's still in favor. He's still in favor. Okay, they were trying to flip him. Uh, yeah, it, the House and uh, the Senate went in disagreement over that fact, but the House prevailed because I don't think the program would have gotten through without it. So that's where we stand. The Speaker was totally opposed to it. Anyway, um, in conference, when we um, talk about, for example, Brown Hall over in Norfolk, the House put in I forgot the exact number, but Brown Hall was falling apart really bad. And it was not on the list to be fixed this year. It was on the list to be taken care of next year. And so a few of us got together on the House side and said, look, we got to do something for Brown Hall over at Norfolk State because it's not fair. The place really is falling down. It just, it's awful. And so we put the money in. Uh, we're setting the bonds out on it, and uh, that should be moving this year, not next year, but this year. Want to get it in there and get it out of the way and get it fixed up so the children over there, not children, but the people who are going over to Norfolk State will have a brand new Browns Hall. Uh, in addition to that, in the capital outlay provisions, uh, we put in uh, 33 uh, projects uh, for construction and that's around 900 million dollars which includes Brown Hall that would be all the colleges uh, across the state that are public universities uh, th there was an argument over public and private funding as you know Norfolk State <coughs> and Virginia State are public institutions and uh, Hampton Institute is private so I want to make it clear that the reason the funds were not given to Hampton Institute on the proton beam was because it's a private institute, and not only that, it has the fourth largest endowment in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. So uh, we felt in good conscience <coughs> if we're going to pour money into something that ought to be, if it's taxpayers' money, it ought to go uh, into public ed public universities rather than private universities. Did you cut all the money out for Hampton for that proton beam this time? That million dollars was cut out. 500 went in. I was uh, going to say, wasn't it a half a million last year? Yeah, 500 thousand. Yes, half a million. Mm -hmm. The governor put in the million. Last two years in a row, uh, mm -hmm. we let that go through on proton beam. <coughs> but the, the, the reason for it was because they're a private institution rather than a public. So I, I just wanted to make that clear because a lot of people have asked why didn't you vote for that and the reason was because it's a private institution and I'll tell you uh, Virginia State really needs some money and I hope we can get on that next year and do what's necessary because both uh, ODU Norfolk State and Virginia State have been sort of stepchildren and we're trying to bring them back <coughs> uh, with regard uh, to other higher education needs, <coughs> Uh, we put in another 600000 uh, for the military program at Virginia Tech, another 275000 for the military program at VMI, 600000 for Virginia military survivors and dependents. That's about an $1,800 increase. Uh, I should say the stipend goes to 1800 I think it was 1600 prior to that. Now it's 1800 And that's for those people that get killed overseas uh, in action. Uh, uh, another 413000 uh, to the extension programs, 
which are helping farmers all over the state. Uh, those extension programs are basically tech extension programs. Um, uh, there's another 148,000 for v of M's, uh, and that's for the blue crab study. Uh, for some reason, every other year, uh, crabs in Virginia are on a downhill, and then they come back. And so uh, the money was put in there to make sure that our seafood industry stays healthy, and so that we'll have that seafood continuing to come in, and uh, Virginia will be one of the leaders in the country with it. Uh, we also uh, put in 117000 uh, for Southwest Virginia Higher Education Center, and that's a center out there uh, where the children would have to either, it's like a two-year college, mm -hmm. so we put the extra money in there so they would have the opportunity to have an education, and as most of you know, there's a program with the uh, community college system where if you go two years uh, and you keep certain grade level, then you can go to uh, college, uh, state-supported college, at an equivalent rate rather than paying that extra money. And that, that's very important because the cost of education today is really going out of sight. And if uh, younger people can stay home and work two years at the community college system and, and then <coughs> get the extra money to go to college, uh, it's a lot easier. I, I, you know, I went to college, when I went to tech, it was uh, $275 a quarter, and that included my uniform, everything but my shoes. And then when I went to law school at University of Richmond, it was $950 a year. Today, University of Richmond is 48000 just to walk through the doors. And it, it's, I, I couldn't have gone to law school. There's no way in the world my parents could afford that. And it, it's, it's not right. So we're trying to do what we can to try to add more money into these schools so that children will have the opportunity to go to college. It, it's not fair. Um, Anyway, the TAG program, for example, is a, a program where if you go to a private school, uh, because there is no state support whatsoever for the private school, uh, these people uh, are moving from $2,800 per month to $3,100 per month. So it's called the TAG program for those people to go to the, uh, a private institution. $8.6 million for in-state undergraduate financial aid. Um, if you go to Tech, UVA, William and Mary, James Madison, any state-supported school, we put in an extra $8.6 million to make sure that those students that don't have the money to go can have some money to get them into school and get them started. You know, can't pay for all of it, but it does pay for a portion of it. Um, we had 5.7 million to eliminate higher education from the 13 million turnover vacancy reversion into central accounts, and that that was a uh, financial thing where uh, we were short of money. Uh, it was 13 million dollars out, so we put another 5 million in there to try to pay make up the difference in the 13 million that had gone out two three years before, and we're going to try to finish off and pay it all off next year if possible. Uh, we also have 500,000 in workforce equipment to implement the businesses. So there's a, a grant uh, up to $500,000 if you're going into a business that you can get from the state. There's certain restrictions to it. Don't know what exactly they are, but I do know that the money is there. You gotta get the qualifications to pass it and it'll help you get into the business. And that's what we want. We want more people getting into private enterprise if possible. Um, we had some allocations that we gave some extra money to. We gave uh, Norfolk State an extra 500000 We gave ODU $5.2 million to go into their programs. That's what we did for the local people down here to try to, to get them up to par with all the other institutions. You got UVA and William & Mary are getting most of the money, and Tech are getting most of the money today. So we're trying to spread that around a little bit 
because ODU and Norfolk State have been left back to the back and trying to get that in for them. Uh, I can go on <coughs> with a whole bunch of other programs that we have, uh, but for the time being, uh, I'm going to get off the uh, money part of it and just talk about uh, there were some, some bills that came in uh, that dealt with, uh, uh, for example, you probably saw it in the paper about um, driving and texting Mr. Moody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just thought I would mention that. What, what I'm you can't doing do that in the car. <laughs> what I'm doing pertains to you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, it's a safety program trying to make sure people don't get hurt in automobiles. And I'm a plaintiff's lawyer, and, and it, it's bad when somebody gets run over or, or hurt because somebody's sitting there texting. Uh, and I voted for it, uh, and I know there's some problems with it. There's no question about it. Uh, however, I think it's a step in the right direction uh, to try to make it a little bit safe. Uh, there were some bills in there dealing with uh, these airplanes that don't have uh, drones. Drones. <laughs> uh, I, I just didn't vote for any of that stuff. <coughs> I just don't believe that uh, we ought to have private citizens searched without a search warrant. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of things in that field that... That didn't pass, did it? Yeah, uh, yes, it yes, did. Yes, it did. Yeah, I voted against it, though. But I just thought I'd mention it. But anyway, yes, sir. Well, the counter-argument to that was a lot of the... What they were trying to do was restrain it because I agree with Johnny on one side, but there's also a lot of documentation that... It's been used on search and rescue missions for little kids that can't. So the question would, do you kill it? Do you not do it? Or do you try to restrict it so that it can only be used for law enforcement and, and rescue missions where someone, you don't want someone flying over a house looking down for no reason. But if you're looking for a small child and, and it's so, that was the argument on the floor. And I think that was why it, uh, yeah. You think they could handle it like a uh, search warrant and have that type of uh, well, I've, approval process? I think you may be going on the right road, uh, Mr. Moody. I think the restrictions that some of the people put on the bill made it more palatable. So it, it can only be used for certain things. But but you don't need a search warrant. And, and, the, and the problem, in my opinion, you know, I'm just old-timer, but uh, I think there's a certain line that you shouldn't cross <clears throat> a privacy um, when you allow the feds or any police agency, no offense, but I don't think anybody ought to be flying over your house because sooner or later, it's a creep when you let something get in. Hmm. Next year, somebody's going to add something to it. And there's going to be another thing added to it, another thing added to it, and say, well, you're already doing this. So, you know, it just creeps on. And I think that freedom is a very important part in the American Constitution. Well, you know, and I agree with that, uh, Google Earth is certainly a step in that direction. You can, you can look in your neighbor's backyard now via Google Earth, uh, which... Uh, I think that argument occurred before that went live, but I, I agree with you, the drones and, you know, it's, uh, an invasion. Uh, it's invasion of privacy. But what I was actually Googling, speaking of uh, electronic means and Texan, was the, uh, you know, last year, because of the uh, suit over the tunnel, we heard a lot about the Public-Private Education Act and uh, uh, how everybody was incensed uh, over it and how we were going to prevent uh, a similar occurrence uh, and how did that fare as far as the repeal is that dead or is that a life support no it, it nothing has happened on it because may 1st they're supposed to have the court case and so it's in the courts right now and when you have a uh, issue that's before the courts at the present time you normally don't put a bill in. 
uh, you got to find out whether or not it's constitutional or not first and let it go. If, if it depends on what happens, uh, then we can amend the legislation the following year. But if, if the bill, if the legislation that is in front of us now on the tunnels uh, pr does not prevail and the suit goes up to the Supreme Court and it's set aside, uh, then you don't have to do anything. There'll have to be some action by the General Assembly to fix it. And there's going to have to be something done to the public-private partnership. Public-private partnership is not bad. It, it's the way it's being handled. And the governor, in my opinion, doesn't have the right to impose a tax. And I think a tax from the 2008 legislation, when you talk about a fee or a toll, that is a tax. And that's why I think we, we ought to wait and see what the Supreme Court does with it before we try to approach it in any manner. So it's still alive pending uh, the outcome of the, uh, uh, the suit. And if it's, see, if it's done by the court, uh, the private enterprise loses what money it has in it. Right. If we do it by statute, the state's going to lose it. Okay. Yeah. Just to put a bow on the drones, I, I was looking up the bill that was actually passed places a moratorium on the use of unmanned <coughs> aircraft by state and local law officials, enforcement, and regulatory entities until July 1, 2015, except in defined emergency situations. So I don't think if you go home, you'll see some drones flying. <laughs> just a joke. I, I yeah. think, well, just about covered most of the information. My concern is when we look at the area, like here in Portsmouth, we have very little leveraging. We will not be able to get in or out with having to pay a fee because we are landlocked. Mm -hmm. And even if we look in terms of the rivers and the tunnels, we're going to have to pay. It seems as if somewhere the communities, we really need to look at that because the economy in this area is not growing with leaps and bounds. So where is the money going to come in to give us the access that we have with our neighboring cities. Because when we look at those out, I'm looking at Chesapeake and the cities on that side, they can span everywhere. We cannot. We are locked in a lot. Well, so what are some of the <laughs> well, strategies? Well, if I could just briefly comment on it, I, I don't know. but. Uh, I would assume that eventually the person that really gets hurt is Norfolk and Virginia Beach. Yes. Because if those tolls are allowed long term, term, term long, long term, term, right? Short term, we're going to take a beating. We're going to get it. Yes. Yeah. Long, term. long term, they will. They will because, and they're not looking at it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know why, but I'm just saying to you. We're fighting for them too, as That's well right. as for us, mm -hmm. but, uh, because you know we're divided by this river, and and if these tolls are allowed to go on, then you'll have them coming from Hampton over, you'll have them coming from uh, Chesapeake on the uh, <coughs> planning on tolls over there. You're not going to be able to get into Norfolk or Virginia Beach without a toll. Mm -hmm. So down the road, and I figure ten years from now probably. Uh, <laughs> We will. We should build more west, west yes. going to Isle of Wight, Southampton County, all that area. Will probably grow because people aren't going to pay a buck eighty nine plus three and a half percent per year increase each way. Trucks are seven dollars and fifty cents. How do you get groceries into Norfolk? You can't get it. You know that's fifteen dollars a truckload. That's right. That's this year. Next year it goes up three and a half percent minimum. So, you know, you look at it five, six years down the road, you're talking about a lot of money. That's right. Well, and every box. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ms. Ms. Brown, I, I think that you remember a couple of years ago when, when we, this first came up. I remember. You know, I, I think that what the city, what I would think doing, putting on my economic development head is that, you know, if in the event the lawsuit does not work, 
even if it does, I think we need to, as a city, start right. to map out a strategic plan right. that, that shows how we will react to this transportation right. challenge. Because to me, just an observation, the growth is going to be west. That's right. And so we need to redeploy our economic assets and see how can we take advantage of that. Of that. How can we, if, if we have to go into revenue sharing with Northern Suffolk, we have things on the table, start to look at where can we grow because at worst case, the tolls will do, and I think this is what uh, Delegate Joanna was saying, at worst case, the, 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 the tolls will divide Hampton Roads. People will avoid the tolls. You can look at, uh, if you look at the traffic counts that are occurring once a toll is in place and before, you have about a 25 to 30 percent drop off in traffic. So there's not going to be a problem with going through the downtown tunnel. It's just going to be fewer cars, and that's going to have a financial impact. But people will move, and, and, and people are going to move. So I think in addition to the economic development strategy, connect with the business folks, try to turn it into a sustainable competitive advantage. And the last piece I think we should try to do as a city is to say quickly get, get a hold of HRT mm -hmm. and say for those folks who have to commute, what alternatives can they do? Can they do some fast bus routes where people can get on a bus and get to downtown Norfolk? But once they get to downtown Norfolk, where else are they going to go? Uh, HRT in the current, if you read the contract, the 120-something pages of it, HRT has a dedicated revenue stream. Right? Two million. What are they going to do for the citizens of Portsmouth to make their commute easier? And I think that's a valid question that they should answer. Increase the trips from every half hour to 15 But, but minutes. we should be able to look at routes. We mm -hmm. should be able to say, what are your route? Can they, can they do a dedicated, for example, can they do a dedicated route for people who go to Norfolk State, no dementia, right. yeah. do a loop? Those types of things should be on the table. And even, you know, and because and I think the biggest challenge that I see us having going forward is, uh, whoever plans out the transportation has to get away from this idea of the, their, our transportation challenge is moving cars. We need to embrace the urban model in terms of it's moving people. Yep. That's what it's got to be about. And maybe we look at increased trolleys or tolls, or not tolls, um, the ferry. Ferries, whatever. I mean, we need to start to figure out how we're going to get people because the biggest challenge that I think long-term Virginia Beach and Norfolk are going to have is that for the longest time the hidden secret is a lot of Portsmouth people work over in there. In those cities. That's right. And if they got to pay a toll, they're going to start looking for jobs oh, in other places. Mm -hmm. so. Yep, that's definitely okay. a mindset. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate everything you've done. Yeah. Thank you. And I thank yes. them too. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. And good luck to y'all. <laughs> Thank you. You got a tough job. Okay. All of you. Hey, Don't we know how to make that joy for call. We know how to call you. That's your sweet. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. What Rosalind just passed out, of course, is the uh, paper copy for tonight's uh, presentation on our capital improvements program. Last week uh, we had a overview of the budget in total with a good focus on the general fund. Uh, our capital improvements plan for 2014 or for the fiscal year 2013-2014 totals 58.8 million dollars. Oh, okay. By the way, we had a technology uh, issue over here, so bear with us as we coordinate our, our slide changing. 
Uh, this is the slide that you saw last week. It includes now the information we got from the schools. Tonight we're going to focus in more on the CIP, which totals $58.8 million. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the funding categories, uh, sewer, water, and, and if we could go back to the previous slide, note the big change between this year, the current year we're in, and next year. And that's driven by two things, and both of them are, well, one's utilities, and we'll talk in detail tonight. That's the replacement of our filters at the water treatment plant. We have 16, and as you can imagine, they have been built as the system's demand grew. And so you might have one that is quite old and built uh, without reinforcing uh, steel, and one that's a little bit younger, but they all are old and they need to be replaced. So that's a big project. All 16 of them? Well, we're actually going to come down and drop it from 16 yeah. to 10, and we'll cover that. The other are the other uh, reason why we have this big increase is the regulatory stuff we have to do with stormwater management. As all the communities that are in the Chesapeake uh, Bay uh, drainage area uh, have got to comply with the Clean Water Act. So, if we could go to the next slide, uh, that takes that $58 million and puts it into sewer and water, drainage and street employment uh, improvements, economic development, parks rec, uh, municipal facilities, and you can read uh, the categories. Next slide. But let's look at sewer. And I'm going to ask Brian to come forward. Sewer uh, of that 58 million is 11.1, uh, almost 11.2. And the funding, and this is a format that we're <coughs> going to show you. We're going to show you the funding source for that particular section. As you can see, this particular uh, component of your CIP is made up of bonds plus cash funding. Remember, I explained last week that we're cash funding uh, to the tune of almost $4.5 million uh, capital projects with this uh, budget. But this cash is coming out of the utility fund, Brian. So that's not part of the $4.5 million. Well, it's, it? it's coming from the utility fund, and we'll cover that. That's a good question. Okay. Um, so, uh, like Mr. Rose said, our um, sewer piece uh, is a little over $11 million. Um, Deborah, could you do the next slide? Um, we basically have three main categories. In the utilities CIP, um, what, what we te you'll tend to see is we, we have more categorical projects uh, from a system improvement perspective rather than specific it's for this street or this location because we have so many projects of varying size and scope but basically um, we divide it into three areas we have our miscellaneous um, uh, citywide improvements these could be anything from uh, uh, minor projects like re rehabilitating pump stations lining or replacing sections of sewer lines that are failing and things of that nature our biggest expense on the sewer side is this next one, which is our sanitary sewer overflow elimination uh, program, which of course that's the consent order. Um, most of you that have been on counts for a while know we've been under a consent order for the last several years, as have all of the localities within Hampton Roads, including the Hampton Roads Sanitation District. And this is to eliminate overflows when it rains. Basically, um, we have an old system, as you know, um, and whenever it rains with leaky pipes, we have a lot of that infiltration of the rainwater. And at times, it, when you have a tremendous amount of rain, when we have the hurricanes and storms and so forth, um, you, you will have overflows, as do all the localities, as does HRSD. And so we're under a consent order to um, correct that. Uh, where we are in that process, we've gone through lots of um, evaluation, we've done smoke testing, we've done uh, CCTV of all the lines, and we're in the process of developing our rehabilitation plan. This is going to be a 20 to 30 year process, and so we're going to be, this, this 6.9 is just the uh, start, and, and it'll be of that order of magnitude, upwards of 8 to 10 million a year is what the estimate is of what we're going to uh, envision with um, sewer improvements. 
And so this is to get us started um, with uh, that first uh, piece of the um, puzzle on the, the um, consent order compliance. How long has the consent order been in place, man? Uh It's been uh, in place, it's before I got here, I want to say since about um, 04, 05, but I, I, I need to look that up. I'm not exactly certain, but it's been, it's been in place for several years. Um, and like I said, it's all the, all the localities um, are having to comply. Now, if you recall one, one piece of this, if you recall about a, um, almost not quite a year ago, um, we came to council, uh, all the councils uh, in the region approved a resolution to do a study with through the PDC about looking at what's the what's the possibility of regionalizing uh, the sewer systems consolidating is there any benefit to doing that and that was driven in part by the consent order process um, to, to see if it was more economical to to deal with the consent order on that basis and also from an operation standpoint because if you think about it um, our sewer is sort of um, halfway a regional system the collection piece is done individually by localities, but all the treatment is done regionally by HRSD. So the thought is, what if we just regionalized everything? So that's in a study phase. You'll be hearing more about that in a few months when that's complete. And um, the, the, the resolution that you pass and all the localities pass is not binding. It just says, hey, we'll, we'll, well, let's take a look at it, see what the results say. And then, uh, and then once we get those results back, then council, all the councils and boards in the region will be deliberating that. So this could possibly change depending on the outcome of that study, but right now we have to continue moving forward. Explain this, the sewer overflow. You got a reservoir at what range? It spews over into lakes. What, what, what are we trying to mitigate here when um, you say the overflow? Any overflow from a manhole, yeah. for example, let's say that we have a rain event that overcomes our storm sewer system, and it may be interconnection, too. And so when that water starts bubbling out of uh, the manhole... Okay, uh, that's backing up, though. I was yep. thinking overflow. You're talking well, that, both. That's, the, that's, that's, that's an overflow. Okay. Right. Right. Oh, okay. It overflows yeah. the and system and goes into yeah. the... Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a okay. discharge. we got to report that. If we don't right. report that... Right, you get fine. We yeah. get fine. That's right. I got you. All right, thank you. And it's not unique to port. It's not just yeah, a port. Yeah, I understand. Right. Yeah. The third piece um, is a uh, category of our cave-in repair. Um, this is when um, we have uh, uh, a collapsed line. Uh, you know, we have, again, you know, when I was here just a few weeks ago talking about the downtown project, 100-year-old system or more. Uh, a lot of these pipes, especially the terracotta pipes, um, they, you'll have a collapse. And you, usually where you see that, you'll see a depression in the street, a pothole, you know, will develop. Uh, and so we've got to go in and, and repair that section usually you know, cut that section out and then we will try and line it uh, from manhole to manhole if we can. So depending on the extent of that, <coughs> depends on how much of a repair needs to be made. But that's um, that component um, on the sewer system. So those are the three main categories on the sewer side. So if we go to the next one, on the water side's a little bit more, uh, about 23 million for proposed for FY14. Most of that is bonds, but as you can see, there is that cash portion um, and so utilities has historically been able to cash fund a portion of our CIP, but of course um, our projects tend to be a lot more expensive, unfortunately, um, so we can't cash fund the whole thing, but we are able to um, cash fund portions of it. So and, and so what we're using is almost 2.8. Uh, 2.8, yeah, 2.8. I was doing the math real quick. He's faster than me. <laughs> Uh, on utility fund cash. So we got 4.5 in the general fund for general fund capital projects and 2.8 on the utility fund for cash funded projects on the utility CIP. Okay, the next one. Okay, so we have a, uh, on the water side, we have a lot, uh, a lot more going on uh, here in the near future. Um, just a little bit of a background. You know, our, our water treatment facility is actually located in the city of Suffolk. Um, we have uh, several dams that form, we have four lakes that form our lake system, that's our water supply. So the water is treated in Suffolk and it is pumped approximately 18 to 20 miles over to Portsmouth and throughout our distribution system. Um, 
It dates back again to the 1890s, so we, we, it's an old <coughs> system. Sister. And uh, besides serving um, the city of Portsmouth, we have contracts with Chesapeake and with Suffolk. We sell them bulk water, um, so those are also um, customers of ours, and they're currently they're about um, a third of our annual uh, uh, average daily production is sold to uh, Chesapeake and Suffolk. Why don't we it, take well, a it, moment uh, here and put the light on and let Brian show you the system, uh, and this may help frame up your questions too. Okay. Yes, sir. What type of money are we uh, funds at Chesapeake and Suffolk? Or Norfolk and Suffolk are paying. Uh, revenue, Chesapeake revenue. And, and and we have contracts with Chesapeake and Suffolk. They're mm -hmm. what's called bulk water contracts. Uh, the contracts, the water rate is negotiated, <laughs> um, and they buy wholesale from us and then retail it to their customers. Uh, so we have the municipalities as the water customer primarily. Um, those rates increase when our water rates go up. And we thought it would be useful to, to show you the system. This is downtown Suffolk, and that's at the far end is Portsmouth. This is going through the swamp, and this is going out towards 17. And it will be good for you. All those dams that Brian talked about are on the west side of the water treatment plant. And so to put this in context, why don't you show how we get the water from there to here? Sure. So the treatment plant, again, is in uh, downtown Suffolk. Um, it's across the street from Lipton T, if you know where the Lipton plant yeah. is. Yeah. Um, here are our lakes. Uh, this is Cahoon up here. It feeds into Lake Mead. Then you have Kilby on the other side, and then Spates Run up here, sort of like a horseshoe shape um, uh, as our four lakes system. And so. Once it leaves the treatment plant, it's going one of two places. Um, it's going through our low pressure system, which is actually three mains in parallel that come and then basically uh, go through downtown Suffolk and then eventually run generally along the US 58 corridor through the Dismal Swamp uh, and then all the way to our Frederick Boulevard uh, pump station. So the tanks that you see right up next to the interstate on Frederick Boulevard, that's where it's going and then it's repumped. Um, into um, our distribution system, basically serving all of the downtown, what we refer to as the downtown area. Then the other, uh, the other piece is a, a high pressure system. Um, Suffolk actually takes its water from us right at the plant out of that system. And then the rest of it goes along Wilroy Road, Nansman Parkway. It's two separate lines. They eventually converge into a single line and it comes all the way up into uh, Churchland to the uh, tank there on Cedar, uh, Cedar Road. And they actually go across country. Um, if you're familiar with just uh, south of Drivers, a subdivision in the swamp called Wonder wow. Wonderland Forest, it goes right through there. So uh, as it goes to make its way to Route 337, Portsmouth Boulevard and 17, <laughs> it's actually going across country. So Suffolk takes its water at the plant. Um, Chesapeake actually takes in several places. They have, we have several metered locations. The two main points are here uh, in Bowers Hill, um, actually where they have their treatment facility. They take some there. But the bulk of it that serves their western branch is over here on Gum Road um, behind the Chesapeake uh, Square Mall. So it's where they take it. How old did you say this piping is? The, the, the low pressure mains, um, uh, the oldest dates to the late 1800s. Uh, is, there, of it, yeah. is there life expectancy on? It's, on the, it's, it's past its life okay. expectancy. So uh, are we ahead of the game and trying to make sure that we don't wait? That is anything? a great that's question. A very good question. That we have the, that, that, yeah. that's one of our projects. A very good question. So, um, and, and <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Danny's help. <laughs> <laughs> the contracts with Suffolk and Norfolk, are they long-term contracts? Yeah, Can they, they bow it, out of us? It's Chesapeake, I mean, Chesapeake. Chesapeake and Suffolk. Yeah. Chesapeake's contract uh, currently runs through 2026, and Suffolk runs through 2040. So they're, they're, they are, uh, uh, I, at this point, I would say a medium-length term, uh, <laughs> because they were done originally done in the 90s. But they're large consumers. But right, they're, they're, so so, uh, and there and there was called 
um, take or pay contracts, right. meaning they're guaranteed and required to take a certain amount quantity wise. Uh, whether or not they take it, they pay us the value of that quantity. So it's metered consumption. Uh, and then we do a reconciliation at the end uh, in, on a calendar year basis. So every January, we reconcile their consumption from the previous calendar year, and then we balance bill them. Should they not actually consume what they're contractually required, we balance bill them for the difference. And, and let's talk about our demand. Um, why don't you tell in round numbers what our demand is and then Chesapeake and right. Suffolk. Yeah, our average demand, our average production last year was about um, 17 and a half million gallons per day on average. Of that 17 and a half, six and a half goes to Suffolk and to Chesapeake. Two and a half to Suffolk, four to Chesapeake. So roughly a third of our daily production is sold to um, Suffolk and to Chesapeake. So, and, and our plant, our, our, our system rated capacity is 33 MGD, so we're only about half uh, production of what we could produce uh, from, a, from a production standpoint. Now, this is a beverage company, just like Coca-Cola. <laughs> uh, we produce a beverage to drink. And Coca-Cola is very concerned about how much of the beverage gets spilt on the floor and they can't account for it uh, and can't sell it. And so one of the challenges of having a whole system, we know how much water we can produce per day. What's at the and, other end? And, and then we know how much we bill for. At the other end. Then the question is, why yeah. the difference? Yeah. If, you're, if you're billing, if you're producing at X, and you're only billing it X minus 10, where'd the minus 10 go? And it could be a lot of things. It could be leaks along the transmission mains. It could be leaks in the distribution system. It could be that our meters are off. And so, uh, or even our meter reading. It's a hot day, it's 104 degrees, and you're meeting, you're at your 267th meter that you're reading that day. Uh, you might make a mistake, and that's why it's important for us to automate uh, this meter rate. <clears throat> what we want to do is, if we produce X millions of gallons, we want to sell X millions of gallons. We don't want it to leak into the swamp, in a one to land forest, or along 58 or 337 or wherever. What is our difference now, percentage-wise? I don't have that number handy. Yeah. I mean, we, it, it's, uh, I, I'll have to get that to you. I don't, I don't have that handy. Has, has the Lake Gaston uh, pipeline uh, source, uh, is that uh, taken any border business from us? Uh, no, no, it hasn't. Same um, that, that pipe discharges about at Windsor. There's a, there's a dip in 58 right past uh, the food line on the east side, and that's where it dumps in and then it feeds into the Norfolk Lakes. And it's Norfolk that gets that water to sell it to Virginia Beach. But I thought they were selling it to some of Chesapeake as well, uh, some of our customers, former customers. Is that? Chesapeake has an allotment of, they, they, they partnered, they have an allotment of that water um, uh, from Lake Gaston. Remember when that deal came together, the beach looked for allies because they were looking for allies, not on, more for the politics of it, um, because they were going to do uh, battle with North Carolina with the Army Corps of Engineers, the whole question of interbase and transfer of water. And so back in the 80s, when they said, we're going to Gaston, that was a unilateral decision. They went around and said, how much do you want Chesapeake? How much do you want Suffolk? How much do you want Isle of Wight? And um, a lot of communities signed up. The question is, how much water are they taking? And that's, that's a good question. I don't know that don't answer. And, and the reason why I mention that, I, I believe at one time there was an agreement between Portsmouth and Norfolk where Norfolk wouldn't sell water. west of the right. uh, Elizabeth River. Well, they're not selling, they're not selling finished water. And that's the, that's the, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. That's the issue that they've got. We're, 
We're on the right side of the equation. Our treatment plant is at this end, so we can pick up water customers along the way. Norfolk's water treatment plant is not here, even though their lakes are here. It's in Norfolk. And so uh, the best they can do is sell bulk raw water. Mm -hmm. And that's a cheap price. I mean, the expense is in the, the treatment. Oh, that's right. Processing of that's a big difference. Yeah. That's where this, your money goes. The 16 filters that we talked about earlier, we dropped it down to 10. When was the last time they were replaced? Uh, well, the, the media gets replaced, but we're actually talking about a comprehensive, actually new structures and everything. The, me the media gets replaced periodically, but the, but um, media. You talking about cartridges? Yeah. Okay. And, and why don't we t take a moment just to talk about what these things? Think about it as a big funnel, okay? And in this funnel is layers of different types of material. And the process is to put the water in at the top and let it go through the bottom, and it that media <coughs> filters that stuff out, and it takes out some very small microscopic stuff, and it can be different materials uh, changing that media. And these, how deep are they? They're pretty deep. Um, they're <coughs> they're taller than me. <laughs> They're twice as tall as and I'm a tall guy. <laughs> but you know, but, look here. Excuse me. Go ahead. Um, and so we got 16 of those, and, and those that, that media gets dirty, even though you, you backwash them, you reverse the flow of the water and skim, <laughs> skim off the scum, um, you have to replace it every once in a while. But we're at that point where we have, we actually have um, <clears throat> our, our old structure for the, for the filter is made up of concrete only and not concrete and re rebars. And so they, yeah. This is a $25 million project. We're taking it down from 16 to 10. It's going to take three years to do. And again, we wouldn't need 10 filters just for our demand. So part of the bulk water rate that we have for Chesapeake and Suffolk built into that rate is the allowance for capital and capital replacement. That's why I asked how long is this their contract, how much water they use, see yeah. where we're gonna get it. And, and we're already internally thinking about strategies to to increase the length of those contracts. And, and I can tell course, you this as is far as the filter going from 10, 16 down to 10, mm -hmm. are these new filters that much more efficient that you can run more water through? Well, you don't need those additional six. Right. They're well they're 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 larger, they're deeper. Uh, and so they'll have a larger uh, capacity. capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if I, if I may, if I I think I can answer your questions if I let me go through because it's on the on the, 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 the next slide. If you remember one thing, there is a strategic value to having this water system. Um, we're a region of the haves and the have-nots. We right. talked about the, fa uh, the the fact that Chesapeake and Suffolk have the land. Well, we got water, and. Uh, Suffolk's going to have a very diff difficult time getting water out for 460. And look where our lines are. Mm -hmm. We need to take care of our investment. Yes, sir. Correct. We do. Yeah. All so, right. Lights and next slide. Well, well, hold on, before you move to the next slide, uh, just real quickly. Um, so these are, the, the, we, of course, you know about our dam upgrades. That's that's continuing this and. Um, downtown mass utility plan we're in phase one that will continue the infrastructure improvement um, line um, you know, we're talking about citywide replacement water lines what this line does is for example when public works like say for the project they're doing in Brighton right now those neighborhood projects mm -hmm. well, while they're doing those neighborhood projects doing curb and gutter and things drainage and things like that we go ahead and replace our infrastructure at the same time so we only disturb the neighborhood one time so it's it's, it's projects like that that come out of uh, out of this line and let me uh, also dwell on this for a second 
Brian told you that most of the feed for downtown comes out of the two tanks uh, at uh, Frederick. Frederick. Frederick, and they're big tanks, so we got a lot of water there. The problem is getting the water from those tanks here uh, so that we have sufficient fire flow and, and where we're standing. And that's part of the, the concern as we look for all this development that we really would want to take place. The problem exists on getting the water for the fire flows between those tanks right. and here. So as this project is going in, it's not just replacing an old line, it's replacing that old line with a larger line. Okay. Mm -hmm. But John, along with that, one of the things that we've learned through the projects that the students did in the water line, tracing that all the way through, they were able to give some valuable information doing their science technology research <coughs> that enhanced the way we were filtering water through. So uh, we had some young people that show some of the way, I'm a young lady, so I can remember when they did, you know, some of the things and it did make a difference. My son came through that process. So uh, here's where we're talking about the, uh, the filter uh, replacement project. Um, like we mentioned earlier, it's a, a 33 MGD plant. We have 16 filters. They were built in, in, in three stages. The oldest filters uh, filters one through four have our, our largest filters, uh, but they date to the 1940s. Uh, and that's about a third of our production is just in those four uh, filters. And that's where we're having problems with um, the age, uh, leaking, um, deterioration. There's been some settlement. And then the other, other filters came online um, in, the, in the 60s. Uh, and then the, the last set was the early 80s. So it's been sort of done in phases. So it's not as efficient as it could be because you have different control systems, different pumps, those kind of things in order to make that work. I have really argued with, with uh, Brian that being born like those fil filters in the 1940s is not that old. <laughs> And you're really tall. <laughs> and I'm really tall. Those filters, uh, seriously, are about two stories high. I mean, you have to go down. They're big. They're big guys. Um, so the um, so we're we're going to replace those 16 with 10 deep bed filters. Um, okay. With the, of course, so that'll have the latest technology. They'll be much more efficient. They'll have better backwashing capability. So, and the other thing that they're going to do is, is that the other reason for this project, besides the maintenance and just the end of useful life and, and the normal replacement of infrastructure, is that we are heavily regulated um, by EPA and the state health department through the Safe Drinking Water Act. Wow. And so there are constantly, and, and, and we're, we are, in order to meet the new regulations coming down the pike as far as uh, reduction of contaminant levels and, and new emerging contaminants that are coming out and being able to meet those. That's why, that's the other driving factor in, uh, in terms of why we are uh, working to replace um, the filters. So this will improve the water quality? Yes. Yes, it will. For the end user? Yes. Let me ask you, as you take these filters offline to replace them, mm -hmm. what you do, one or two at a time, three or four? My question yeah. is, the rest of them online will have the capacity to still handle what we need on a daily basis yeah, or yes actually what the way and then will you take offline at well, a time? well actually what's going to happen is we're going to in essence uh, replace all of them we're going to basically build an entire new filter structure mm -hmm. and build all 10 and bring and, and just plug and, 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 exactly. and, and bring them all online uh, and then take them all, and then take the rest offline. Mm -hmm. but that's that's uh, that's that's the the, the plan. So um, you're eliminating six completely, right? Mm -hmm. Right. right. And keep in mind, those six, they're not they're 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 different sizes, different right. capacities, Congress. different yeah. So, um, but the ten the, the the ten that we're going to have are going to be uniform, um, and so we will have um, so that you know again better capacity, better uh, throughput. Um, you know, and it will work 
much better, much more efficient for us. So that whole piece is fifteen million dollars and be done in three years. No, sir. No, no, no. the fifteen million is just it, this is going to be over three years. This is just the first part. It's in design now, uh, and we will uh, go out to bid in the next fiscal year and get started in the next fiscal year. But the project's going to span three fiscal years. Probably take about twenty-four months total construction time, but it's going to span three fiscal years and we're and the current estimate right now because they're still in design we're still in the early parts of design but the right now it's the ballpark is 25 between 25 and 30 million dollars is what we're expecting that that project to cost but again that's that's going to last us for generations yeah. you know once that once that's put in place because we're replacing um, um, Filters that have been in service close, you know, seventy plus years. How long does it take us to get our money back out of that? You run those numbers yet? That's the right ask. Same thing. Ha um, okay. Well, it's it's hard to say because it's a fun that's a function of demand, and so if we have more increased demand, well, based on our current yeah. demand. Based on, yeah. Yeah, just find out. That'd be interesting to know. We're going to spend twenty to thirty million dollars. How long mm -hmm. take us to get that back? Okay, you can continue. I got it. Okay. Um, so that's on the, the filter pro, uh, um, project. Um, miscellaneous water, water, that's just for, that's just for um, our minor, uh, minor repairs, uh, things that, uh, smaller scale things, valves or uh, small sections of line that require um, um, uh, attention. Um, this last piece, uh, the low pressure transmission mains, this is, uh, goes back to, um, um, the uh, schematic I showed you here. Uh, when we started, we focused on the low, the low pressure. This is our oldest piece. That <coughs> some of it's 100 years old or more. And so when we started this project, you know, it was the focus on the low pressure. Is that why it's low pressure? The pipe so old, we scared we're going to blow it It's just how we operated. We just okay. operated at a lower pressure, okay. about 20 psi. Okay. Um, um, it's it's not. It has nothing to do with the pipe. It's just how. Okay. how it's always historically been operated. Okay. Um, and so what we, 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 when we, we've gone to look at this and, and to Councilman Edmonds, you know, are we trying to be proactive? And we are. But we, we said, you know, we need to look at the entire transmission system. So even though this is relatively younger, you know, this, you know, this is still, you know, 1970s, still has useful life. Um, but let's look at, take a holistic approach of what we're doing as far as from a transmission uh, perspective and so we are in that study phase right now um, we won't uh, we still have several months to go before we get um, those results back with recommendations about what kinds of enhancements whether it's replacement repair more interconnectivity between the two um, storage capacity the whole works as far as what we need to do from a transmission and distribution perspective to make our uh, system uh, much more efficient and uh, improve and reduce risk uh, and increase reliability so but perfect world do you want to replace the whole line if you if that, don't yeah, you got we don't know no, well we, we don't know i mean it, part of it is you know um and, and we didn't set any parameter intentionally we didn't set parameters we didn't tell the 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 uh our, our consultant well this is what we want or this is our ideas of what we think we need it's more of a, bl a, a blank slate to say this is what we have, what is the best, you know, and, and, and looking at where our demand centers, where our largest customers are, where do we need to move water to, where is Suffolk, they're a customer, where at Chesapeake, all of those pieces and what's important. We have three lines here. Do we need three lines here? Do, you know, and, it, you know, it, it, the simple answer is we'll just replace the three that we have with new lines and they'll last us another hundred years. But that might not be the best scenario or the best solution for what it is that we need in terms of what today's demands are, where we foresee that going in the future. So we ask them to be more holistic in looking at it, how we can and look at the entire system. So that's what they're doing. This the the million you got a dollar, consultant doing that. That's correct. Okay. And, and the, what we put in for the for next fiscal year is we're going to get those results back and then we're going to not start needing to do design work. Um, and this will, whatever, whatever comes of this will be in phases and will probably be multiple projects. It's not going to be just a single, let's run a 20, new 20-mile 20 pipe 
from point A to point B. Um, and so that's it, but, but this is one that you'll continue to see in future CIPs um, as far as additional funding going towards that, depending on what the outcome is uh, of our evaluation and where we need to go. So John, with all of this, looking at what you just presented here, there's no need to increase our rates to be able to capture some of this cost? Not this year. Not this year, okay. And Chesapeake doesn't own any water? They do. They do. They have uh, a water treatment plant on the Northwest River uh, that's plagued by desalinization uh, problems. They built a new uh, filtration plant on 58. On 58, actually between between our plant and Portsmouth, uh, right by the uh, the airport. Yeah. On 58, mm -hmm. on the right hand side, going uh, west. Yet they still buy water from us and Correct. from all. Yes. Correct. And then Suffolk has two plants. They have a conventional filtration plant and a, a desalinization plant. All right, let's go on. Uh, next slide. Uh, drainage and street improvements. James, as you can see, total 5.6. Uh, and this is all under this way. Please. Um, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council. Um, these are our drainage and street improvements, CIP. Um, ADA compliance, curb cuts is an ongoing program where our citizens can call in and request a handicap ramp. Um, they typically call in to our plug works department. Um, for the $25,000, you get between 15 and 16 ramps per year. Um, the bridge repairs is a continuation. Um, every year we inspect our bridges. Um, determine if there are any repairs needed. Um, typically, they're concrete repairs to uh, to the decking, um, pier caps, pier columns, bar rails, things of that nature. That's right. Where are we on the Churchland Bridge? On the Churchland Bridge? Yeah. That's in an upcoming slot, so okay. if you just sit tight for a little bit. Next year. Okay. Um, I'll go across that frequent. I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wash your fingers when you go across. <laughs> um, the, bottom, the bottom number is for our ongoing um, HSIP project, Highway Safety Improvement Program. We have currently a contract to do 10 intersections. Um, that's scheduled to be completed by the end of the year. That's federal money, um, so it's totally reimbursable. This amount here is to cover potential contingency, so if we have to pay it out, we'll get it back. Now, I was reading where uh, the feds have cut back on some of that uh, money. It, that is, are we going to be impacted? That is a different funding source. That is CMAC projects and RSTP funds. Um, there's a meeting at the TPL on the 19th where there will be a discussion, should I say fight, <laughs> over that to determine which projects get cut, which projects continue to be funded. Yeah. Um, our current project that's, um, that has that type of funding is actually at the, I want to say 100% design stage. It's in VDOT's hands, um, from my understanding. Um, projects at that level um, are the least effect, likely yeah. to have funding pulled because they're so far along. But we'll see on the 19th for sure. Next slide, please. Um, this gets into um, our larger, our storm projects that are funded by our stormwater utility. Um, our main our main item here is the drainage and facilities repair, and that's for our ongoing system maintenance. Um, we spend anywhere between $2.5 and $3 million per year um, on routine maintenance such as cave-ins, um, storm drain rehab, which covers your pipe cleaning, your CCTV inspection, um, and your lining. Um, there's also ditch maintenance and small projects such as um, replacing the culvert under uh, Dale's, Dale's Hower parking lot. Um, Currently, there's a project with Pilot Works where they're replacing the culvert underneath Roosevelt that connects um, Warfield Canal to uh, Crystal Lake Drive to the Crystal Lake to Crystal Lake, and they're also scheduling to replace actually the <coughs> culvert underneath um, that connects Crystal Lake right there. So these are types of projects that get funded out of that line. Um, you see the small amount here for dredging of uh, stormwater management facilities, <coughs> address water quality, uh, and and also water depth. Um, these retrofits of stormwater facilities have actually become one of our major strategies as we move forward in addressing some of our TMDL concerns. I got a question. Yes, you say you're going to be replacing something in the Crystal Lake area? Yes, sir. What? The, there's an arch culvert that, that uh, Crystal Lake's uh, Cavalier Manor's here. Um, I forget the neighborhood. You can help me out. 
Crystal Lake Drive. Crystal Lake, Crystal Lake, Crystal Lake, Crystal Lake Drive. Lake. Underneath Crystal Lake Drive, there's a there's a metal arch, that was and, it's, and it's got some some failures in it. Yeah. Um, Paula Works is. Um, Got, got the design out and got a contractor online. Um, they, they bid the project out and they have a contractor ready to replace that. Um, it's going to be replaced with, uh, I think, two, two 60 inch uh, concrete culverts. Um, it's going to be bedded so you don't have to worry about the road selling. If you go out there now, you can see certain places where they've patched mm -hmm. because what's happening is the arch is starting to, starting to spin and kick out. And so we don't want that uh, to give way. And would that cut off the street? Well, during construction, yes. So they'll they'll uh, they'll start notifying residents and, and post detour routes and things like that, and well, have yeah. contact with the residents to let them know uh, ways in and out, project durations, things of that nature. <coughs> uh, when the projects get getting closer to construction. They dug that out. Two sixty. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, pick one. This uh, this line item here is for uh, compliance with our stormwater permit. Um, you see a couple of items here for uh, water quality monitoring, public education, um, BMP inspections, some other things, our uh, development of stormwater maintenance plan for operations facilities, um, permit renewal, and um, an update of our existing stormwater plan, um, de um, developing the new state stormwater ordinance that fits Portsmouth, and an, and an overview and review of our existing ordinance to make sure they comply with the new ordinance that we have to adopt, as well as training and workshops for staff um, and any other um, type of developers that, that need to be up to speed on these new stormwater regulations. Um, the bottom slide there, we're not asking for any uh, funding this year for replacement of the Churchland Bridge. Um, that's a $29.5 million project. Uh, we have revenue sharing for the design. Um, the design is, the preliminary design is complete. The majority of the environmental is complete. Um, we actually uh, have a revenue application in to the state that we should hear back, hopefully this month, for the right-of-way portion um, of that project. Um, so, so how much money do you think we're going to, we're anticipating from this year? Um, well, we received 1.25 million for design. We're asking for another 1 million for right of way. Um, and then as we move forward and get closer to construction, uh, we're positioning ourselves so we can ask for money from both the state and the feds for, for construction dollars. So um, at this time, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure, but we are positioning ourselves to be able to request that funding. This becomes a candidate for that extra money that's going to come out of the new uh, transportation legislation. And it's already in the TPO, the transfer. It's already in the list of priorities yeah, for the TPO. This is in their six year plan. Yeah. Now, right that could be, that could get very political once. Yeah. <laughs> is that the $3 the million you asked them earlier? Well, for Hampton Roads. You know, that, that's, yeah. not, that's not a, it's mm. nowhere near a sure thing. No. So, not at this point. Well, the problem is, is the funding that's coming, even though, like Delegate James said, it's, it's a start, but it's nowhere near what we need region-wide. And so what you're going to wind up with is all of us in that room fighting each other right. for the few dollars that are there. And you know what that means for the us. Nice, the nice thing is that we don't need the construction dollars right now because it's still under yeah, design. Time. And we're looking at alternatives, for example, how do you span that? Yeah. And, you know, when will we need the money? Sir? No, another year out or two years out? How many years out? Construction is scheduled for 2016. 2016. Now you, you mentioned <clears throat> money for right away. Is, is the the new westbound gonna be in a different footprint? It's gonna be wider because we have to meet federal requirements as far as clear space and um, multi use paths. And so it's gonna be wider. As far the lane the travel lanes will be the same, but some of the clear space. Um, feature that the bridge will be different, so it'll be wider than the existing bridge. So, so is it wider? So, yes, so High Street uh, West or Route 17, whatever you want to call it, is that's not going to have to be widened no. to accommodate it. Think about the foot of the bridge. Visualize going west right. uh, as you leave land. It's that that area right there, and then on the the other land side, the west yeah. side of the uh, western branch. It's the the approaches on either side of the bridge, but it's about 25 properties. Okay. okay. 
2016, we're going to need that $30 million. Yes, sir. They sure will. Um, we're at a little bit of an advantage because we've already saved funding from the state for other parts of the project, so that gives us a little bit of a leg up. And like John said, it's already listed in the TPO list, so it's there, and <coughs> I think, let's hope that list is static because there's several things in there, but ours is somewhere near the top of that list, so... And I think that's one of the few projects we've even got on the whole list. We've only got a couple. Yeah, if we you go through two. the whole list for the region, this one and maybe one other <coughs> small item. So yeah. we would hope this, they, is, this is the biggie. Is that's the fact that we're a, a four matter, does that help us any with the like the regional list? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like compared to like the Lesno Bridge or the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah they got that's a, all on that same list. They got a pro they're prioritizing that list right. talking about. I'll get a copy to everybody. Yeah. We've got that. They just put that out. We'll get a copy to make sure everybody has it. We'll highlight where ours is so you don't get lost on it. You're right. Yeah, regionally significant. So. Yeah, go say that. Yeah, they identified that bridge and that water crossing as being regionally significant. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, economic mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, essentially funding the, the gateways. Um, and this is what? Fred, you want to speak to that real quick? Real quick, it's uh, very similar to what we talked with you about with Frederick Boulevard Carter, the creation of those gateways, landscaping and funding for those projects to continue at other gateways throughout the city. Where is this one at? You got a target yet or just putting money in as a place? Putting the money in it, it may be the continuation as we talked about. Uh, coming up to the interstate. Yeah. Coming up to the interstate or another phase of that, yes, okay. sir. Yeah. It's showing that people know the better how they're going to be. Okay. Parks and Recreation. Margaret, uh, we have 325000 and she'll uh, give you an overview of what this is for. Next slide, please. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council. You know? um, basically, what we have is um, $75,000 designated for our continuous outdoor lighting project. Um, we have two other fields to put outdoor lighting zone, which is a crowded field in the Highland Bitmore. Biltmore. Um, the Holland Biltmore field lights are, are extremely old and we have gone to a system which we have on Douglas Park um, where it's computerized. It can be turned on and off and uh, it can be controlled that way as opposed to the old key system where somebody can go in yeah. and just pick it open and, and, and turn them on and use them at their will. Uh, and then of course uh, our outdoor facility which which covers our uh, church and little league fence replacing and our number four softball field fence and replacing and renovation of tennis courts for uh, Wilson Wilson High Churchland Park and City Park in Cavalier Manor and that's to cover um, resurfacing uh, fencing replacement and lighting replacement and those are pretty much you all have been through the city a lot of those things are just old they've started to split that um, seems awful cheap Margaret yeah. because when we got the price or just the Cavalier Manor one was almost $100,000 to refinish those tennis courts, fix that fence that's broken down, and look, I think somebody ran a truck in the side of they it or did. something. They did. But it was almost 100000 just to do that one park. And you mentioned how many Cavalier a, a, Manor? A lot of these are Wilson. just in phases, yes. Uh -huh. It's Wilson, uh, Churchland, and uh, Cavalier Manor, and uh, City Park. City yes, mm -hmm. and and Churchland. So you're phasing each one, uh -huh. so that's not the total number. Right. So you'll go right. little in right. all of them. Right. And and um, city right now the um, what most used ones are the ones that uh, the Wilson and the Churchland fields. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then sir. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to get ahead of you. Mm -hmm. But is there any way in view where we can look at some uh, recreation facility in areas where we need them pretty bad, such as? the Truxton area and, and the Churchland area? Yes, sir. In fact, we've got an ongoing uh, study of that uh, internally. We're, that's a, a conversation that we started back in December. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a study. We, had we paid for a study last, last year. year. We did. Well, and we're not studying it with a consultant. We're right, looking right. No, at just, yeah. the information in, that in we got study. from in that. Yes, sure. in and Absolutely. looking at, you know, what's available. And honestly, we've got... Um, we got schools that, uh, and David's sitting here, and he may, um, this might light a rocket, but um, every school's in a neighborhood, mm -hmm. and your elementary schools have gymnasiums. 
and this is a perfect uh, use to marry up a neighborhood recreational need uh, with a facility that is mm -hmm. is there. I think that study, if I remember correctly, said the the major deficiency was in the Churchland area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, you're correct. But to answer your question, yes, we're working. Can we, uh, John, can you reissue uh, that yes, study? Sir. I think we have some new members that okay. probably haven't seen that study. Yeah. What, what that study didn't do was put a, a price tag beside the items. It listed, like that bill said, church and, the demand. And, 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 yeah, and fixing up some of the, the existing facilities, yeah. but it didn't get us any prices on it. So that's, Not a timeline so that's what, either. Yeah, but the biggest thing it also didn't do, and we asked the question, did you go and take a needs assessment from each community where kids are and whether or not we had adequate facilities? And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. So they did an assessment on what we had, not mm -hmm. what we need. Your question is more related to what we need. Yeah. And that's so, what we're doing in turn right. That's yes, what sir. we're doing. Yes, okay. Exactly. Because there's a difference in what we need and the people you're serving versus what we have and what we need to <coughs> And that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And oh, and the, I'm sorry, and the final thing, which is a one-time project, is the uh, Paradise Creek maintenance um, and to, to get that park ready. It has different phases, and we're looking at that being one of our premium parks when, by the time we're done, we have canoe and kayak <coughs> launching and some outdoor programming. So it's a one-time thing to purchase some supplies to be able to operate that. Supplies or equipment? Equipment. Equipment, yes. Not, not supplies. I'm sorry. Equipment. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> equipment. All right, next slide. Um, Dennis. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the council. Uh, the municipal facilities uh, is broken down. There's going to be a lot of players in this piece. Um, we've got several different projects, and I think municipal facilities may just be a catch-all for some of those projects. Um, but it's funded in, in three separate uh, ways. First is general obligation bonds at $14 million. The Harbor Center ticket sales are 50000 Now, the Harbor Center ticket sales is a dollar that's added for each ticket uh, that's sold over the $15 <coughs> value, and that goes into a pot. And the reason it's in the capital budget is so that it can carry over. If we have a larger project that we want to do, uh, we can take 25000 from this year and carry it over. If it was in the, the operating budget, that wouldn't be possible. So that, that's an estimate. The 50000 is an estimate on the number of tickets we've sold historically. Uh, the general fund cash is 2.56 million, and that was uh, what you've already seen um, in, in Mr. Rose's presentation. Next slide, and I'm going to ask James to speak to this first bullet. Okay, that top dollar figure is just under a um, million dollars that we need to uh, bring the total funds needed for the new BHS building up to the uh, engineering estimate, which is eight and a half million dollars. Um, it's currently under design. We've been working with uh, the BHS staff and our uh, consultant, HBA, um, along that process. Um, those funds will include the, uh, the demolition of the existing Sears garage, um, the new building, and all its, uh, everything that comes with that, the furniture, the security, the technology, um, it, it, and all that. So this um, million completes what the total ass of what we need of what, eight and a half eight million? And a half. Okay. It's the engineering estimate. Finally. Hey, what, um, what, we are, what, excuse me. What happened, it reminds me, uh, there was an RFP that, uh, that went out, out on that uh, for design. And I know there was some uh, heartburn from some of the uh, players. Re players, responders. Uh, wh wh where does that stand? Does that have to go back out? No, sir. We're, no, we're, we're currently under design. We're, um, we're under design. Okay. okay. Yeah. So no, that was out for construction. He yeah. pulled that. Yeah, this was the it construction. Was, right. It was poor. This was a design build, it sounds like. that. I, I'll check into that, but I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, this design is ongoing, and we're this planning to bid tradition? this out. Sorry. No, go ahead. And we're planning to bid this out in the June, July time frame. That's right. Uh, planning on a nine-month construction so to have this facility <laughs> ready next summer for uh, Bill Park says move in. So, so this is a traditional project where you design it and then you bid it and you build it and it's on a fast track as far as I'm concerned. We've gone too too long. Yes. Uh, oh, with that uh, being that shabby facility, there's no other way to, to yes, describe it. Yes. And so the goal is to get this built on a fast track. We met this morning 
and I want to make sure that everybody is, is understands the speed and uh, we want to give the timeline for this. Um, yeah, um, currently we're under design. We plan to, like I, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, uh, bid this out in the June, July time frame. This summer. You know, I'm, no, I'm, sorry. I'm confused about the funding because th this money, this is, this fund, the money to pay for this was kind of put into a fund and, and uh, I don't know if forgotten is the proper word, but uh, it, it was, uh, it was overlooked. I'm not sure overlooked is the, the word I would use. Um, what word, was would, what word would you use? Uh, neglected. Uh, okay. What, what happened was the city issued geo bonds, and with geo bonds, the, there are federal guidelines, not guidelines, but regulations. You've got to be under construction within two years. Otherwise, the feds think that you're using the funds for arbitrage, that you take the bond proceeds and invest them in order to get uh, a, a good interest uh, return. And so the city had some explaining to do. Uh, those bonds are quite old. They were issued um, probably eight years ago. Right. Eight or nine years ago. And so they, they're they there. I mean, we, you can look in the cash drawer and, and see them. Um, it's, we need to get this project done. We need yes. to get it uh, built. Now this will take care of everything that's on High Street. Uh, the 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 offices that uh, BHS has on Port Center will stay there, and that's always been the plan. That's been the plan for more than 10 years to stay there. This gets everything, though, that's at High and Washington off that site and on the campus of the health department and social services where it should be. So why, why we want all of them on? You want everything. Thank you. Everything. Why we move everything? Everything. Uh, I was not with the city when that decision was made years ago. It was before you mass. came on council. Yeah. It's my understanding that it's more than a 10-year-old decision. It was the, yeah. pardon me? Yeah. No, I mean, Sorry. it's, it's, uh, yeah, but we're paying a fortune over here, John, off of Port Center. And the idea is if we're going to invest and build facilities like this, we need to bring all that stuff together. I mean, to keep and look that, at the whole picture. To keep that piece over there on Port Center. I'm sure Port Center is more expensive than everything else you're trying to combine, isn't it? Thank you. Uh, if you there. guys want to look at that, and that's that's great. Uh, we can uh, do a... I, I think we should. I mean, the object is cost saving. I mean, we want to bring all this stuff under one great. roof, and that just like our police and... Fire, we do the same thing there? I uh, think that that decision probably predates anybody that's on council because it's really that old. Yeah, we, been there, I, I wouldn't have wanted to move half <laughs> of them. What's that, so. Port Center? But we need to do a realistic what timeline. Intellectual Port Center. disability. Yeah. Intellectual disability. Dave Powers building. I think that's the one. That's right. right. A realistic yeah. timeline. Let us, we got it. That's okay. fine. I mean, that. this is good feedback. Yeah. 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 We'll come up with what the additional cost might be. And uh, yeah, now's the time to do it. Because we have, we have, so you have, we have this money. So we, you're just going to, just a matter of figuring out the square footage you need for, for, for what's on. And seeing what we can do as far as funding what that delta is, the yeah. difference between what we got and what that additional cost will be. I mean, we're going to continue to move ahead with it. Absolutely. Right. So ten years yeah. ago, but ten years ago is a long time. Sir? Oh, I, I said, you know, ten years has passed and, and uh, you know, that situation uh, I think it, it has changed. Well, that's why you can't procrastinate on no, these things I, that long I, I, I because agree. the whole model's changed. It's my understanding that that statement was made um, even possibly before the turn of this century. I mean, it's been that far in, in the back. I can understand our haste and all, but I look at the number of years it took for us to get the schools to the point that they are near. And uh, we had to do it in a systematic approach uh, to make sure we got it to the point. So I don't think we can skip over some of those things that were priorities that enhance the quality of life of the generation that will come through and utilize these things once we're all gone. We've been putting them on the back burner too long. And I think it's time we put a realistic timeline and live up 
to what the timeline is that we say we're going to do before putting something else in front of them. All of them are important. They enhance the quality of life, not only for the adults, but we're looking at the children and the generation that comes along. That's our future. Thank you. The next item is the $50,000 for the Harbor Center Pavilion. That's the Intelligence Pavilion at Harbor Center. And it's, it's important that we continually upgrade things. This year we're purchasing all new lawn chairs because when people come there, it's the face of Portsmouth. They may, may be their first trip and we want to make sure that when they leave there, they say, this is a place that I want to come back to. The 85,000 in the hazmat program is used for abatement of lead, asbestos, and mold in city facilities. And that's put in every year because there's always, during construction projects, we uncover something that may not be listed in our asbestos management plan. We have to remove it. We have to deal with it. At the conclusion of the year, uh, that money's put together and we're able to do larger projects. <clears throat> okay. The $225,000 for renovations to various buildings um, it, it's, it's maintenance to buildings that we need to take care of. Uh, there's, a, there's a list uh, that we have that we pull from the top each year, and we do those. Uh, it was part of a facility study. We're still working off of that, and this, the, it's part of our initiative for this operating budget was to upgrade that facility study to go back and look at those things and make sure that we have them in the right priority. But just for example, some of the things that are on the list this year that are, that are going to be much more than the 225000 is if you go down the interstate and you look off to the right at the operations center, you'll see the public works building. It's, uh, it looks terrible there. Uh, that's one of the projects. Uh, we've took over uh, the uh, post office in Craddock and the, the fire department is now using that. The inside of that building is atrocious and needs some work so that they can uh, help them fulfill their mission. Uh, there are several other uh, items that are, that are buying for funding. The uh, women's restroom at the waste management building, that's a huge one. We have more females in, in the waste management uh, industry now and we don't have a uh, bathroom facility uh, an addressing facility for them, but that's a top priority for the upcoming year. To the, yes, the, sir. Dennis, the old post office, you said public works is utilizing fire that? Department. Fire, department. fire department. Fire department. Did I say public works? No, he said meant, fire. Uh, he said fire. He fire said, said fire, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking since they're the next door neighbor there. What are they, <laughs> what are they using it for? I'm going to have to defer that Mike. to Mike Stockton, who's... Um, as a logistics center, uh, we have trouble getting stuff in and sell it and getting it out to the stations so we're looking for a single place to collect and um, uh, handle the stuff that comes in paper products everything else it's a staging area yes so a storage area well with an office in the front yes, what is it? Oh, what is well it? yeah what, what's the cost of operation and is it more valuable to, to try to market the building <laughs> something we can certainly look at. Um, That's another the issue. Building we, was vacant. We didn't yeah, just something to look at. When they were about a public safety building, <laughs> and we desperately need one because that ain't the only disaster you just described. That's right. They're all over this city and every little hell hole out here, and yeah, we, we need and to find some we, way to consolidate. But we end up them. with these piecemeal solutions. Yeah. And we got these annex this buildings here all with a five over. Five-year yeah. lease. Somebody over here with a four-year yeah. lease. <laughs> Yep. We're doing a comprehensive look at uh, these things. I think I sent you an email yeah. about a building that we're leasing. It makes no sense for us yeah, to Yeah, the library. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, we got it. That's right. Okay. Then. All right. Uh, yeah. This is a just a small amount of money for... Yeah, this is mainly for uh, concrete repairs to the decking, um, waterfront power repairs, um, just continuing ongoing through inspection, uh, visual assessments of the seawall. And then this will uh, release the uh, deed of trust on this building. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, next slide. Real quick question. If we go back to Seawall, uh, Mr. Wright, do, is there any future plans of putting any kind of uh, facilities, utilities, services at them docks for ships coming in in the future? I know when we had our... Um, Seawall Festival, and then we had Opsail. There were some issues with the services we could provide. What we thought we had there, we wound up getting Jim Bento to do a lot of that work because we couldn't accommodate the ships that we had. 
Are we even looking at what we, are, what we, we are, have there? A, we are. I mean, we're, we do want to be able to invite folks here, but we need to be able to give them onshore power and right. things of that nature. We're looking at the use overall. Um, and we're, you know, I've threatened to take down no parking, no docking. No docking. In fact, I've had the chief and others look through the uh, city code to find out if there's, if, if you put the signs up and you didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was done administratively. But we want that. We want those two inlets to be a happening place. Right, yeah. right. We want it to be crawling with people. That's right. So, yes, sir. I know we had one hiccup doing upsell that I got a couple of calls about. Uh, Yusuf can tell you that we've got a problem, though, with the seawall, particularly down towards the old Holiday Inn site, um, where it's beginning to show its age. And we've got uh, some big repairs facing us. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that when they put that sheet pollen down, they put uh, riprap at the at the toe, on the outboard side. Yeah. Mm. Should be on the end. Should be on the inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good evening, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> Vice Mayor, <laughs> City Council. Um, what we have down there with that seawall is uh, when it was built. Um, the toe started giving out on them and it started going into the river. So what they did is they brought, brought in barges of um, riprap and they dumped them at the toe of that of We're the at the very end where the Holiday Inn site used to be or along the whole boardwalk? Along, uh, right in front of the... Uh, at the corner where the north inlet is, from the corner down to the end. north. To the Holiday Inn. To the Holiday, Holiday Inn. Inn. So yeah. from that Harbor Towers building down, yes, that whole yeah. piece yeah. there. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and that created a problem. We didn't know that they did that when we started looking at replacing that section. Um, what they... Uh, the Army Corps gave a permit to the localities to go out two feet in front of the existing structure to be able to build a new seawall. And when we tried to go out the two feet, we ended up finding the riprap so we cannot drive <laughs> any new sheet piles oh. in there. <laughs> so now we're looking at, uh, we're researching what we can and cannot do oh, to find a new design down there. And <laughs> do All right, that's down the road. Yeah, no. <laughs> Tell you it it sounds down. like a lot of money. Oh, it, it is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and, and stay tuned tomorrow night because mm -hmm. we, we'll tell you about another water problem. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! And it's 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 a lot of riprap. They did they dumped two barges full. Can we oh sell it to Lord. the new tunnel? <laughs> yeah, the water. How about uh, John uh, <laughs> beyond the seawall while we're in that area? The lighting down that way. Uh, uh, it, it's a lot of lights that are that are out. Uh, can can we? Can we address that? Yes, sir. Some of this? We are addressing that. And uh, we, uh, James and I were just talking earlier tonight about the purchasing some additional lights out of some funding that he currently has for the seawall. The, the, the problem are the lights themselves and the, and the ballast and the, the fact that they were 480 volts and they're on the water. And every time we get a high tide, the water gets into the, to the conduit system. It blows ballast Syracuse. and blows light lamps and we can fix them today and I'll guarantee I'll get a, a call or Bernadette will get a call from the ferry telling us that we have a light out tomorrow so we're trying to address that with with some of the the funds that James has for lighting on the seawall and the the low lighting from Harbor Tower down to um, the old holiday insight that's been repaired we pulled six or seven lamps up from the end, moved them to the front, and we purchased the seven lights to go back in place of that. So we realize that's a problem and we're working to try to resolve it. Okay, good. All right. All right. Pretty wonderful. Thank you. Um, light and next slide. That's a good idea. This next project is one for the 1846 courthouse and because of the age of that facility and, and its historic um, a designation, we're bringing in someone from, from Colonial Williamsburg to do some brickwork, and that's not cheap. These guys are really, really expensive, 
And this is an estimate. If we, we just guess the number of bricks, we talked to, to the gentleman about how much they charge. There's only two or three people in the country that probably that do this type of work because they, they make the mortar and the, 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 the bricks the way they did in the 1800s. And in order to maintain the integrity of that historic facility, uh, this is an expensive project. It also includes the preservation of the outside of the main library. If you go down and look, all of the, 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 the mortar, or not all of the, the mortar, granite or the stones looking. would be gone. But where the, what holds the, the granite into the, the walls on the parapet, uh, all of that needs to be redone before it creates additional problem because water gets down in those open mortar joints and it just expands and contracts and freezes and thaws. So um, th this is a uh, this 400,000 is to address both of those facilities. Where's the damage on the courthouse? All over or particular it, side? Yeah, you can take your finger in places and just 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 take the brick right out. There, it's in pretty bad shape. So it's a brick it, or a mortar or both? Brick mortar both. And these guys are like surgically remove parts, yeah, they, put they it do, back, and they do this type work. They do this in all these um, old all historic areas that are on the historic landmarks. Okay. And the nine hundred thousand dollars is to address an ongoing problem at the courthouse uh, because of the the artwork that that they want to. Um, display in there, there there's certain criteria that we have to meet environmentally and the system that's in the 1846 courthouse currently is a water source heat pump and we need to put a chiller in that whole complex and deal with both sides of that now this uh nine hundred thousand dollars was a was a budget estimate i think that number is going to come in a little bit lower than that but uh, in order to make sure we have funding to do the project once we start um, we, we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to run into things. When you get into old buildings like that, especially the, the building next to it where the Sports Hall of Fame used to be, um, trying to get underneath of that building is going to be tricky with, with piping and, and just the design is going to be tricky on the is, building. Is this, is this a need or a want? And the reason why I say that, we've we got a lot of needs out there in our community. It's a need. And... Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you're talking about a million dollars here. It's we've a need. Been hit with. If we want to continue um, having art in that museum, it's it's definitely a need. Wait, when you say art in the museum, you, you're talking about an art exhibit. Or, yes, sir. I mean, art Criteria exhibits that are we've only there given. for a short period of time. I'm sorry. The exhibits are only there a short period of time. They're there every day. Uh huh. Yeah. They're there every day. We yeah. They change. Well, uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but the same piece of art's not there, you, you know, week in, week out. But when those artists, it's my understanding, and I'm certainly not, uh, you know, an art major, but uh, it's my understanding when that, when, that art, go. <laughs> <laughs> when that art comes in, there's certain criteria that they have to agree that they're going to meet. Um, in order to hang that art or to display that art in the museum and we can't guarantee that with the system that we have in place it's it's the system is over 20 years old um, I guess it whenever they we go back and look at when the when the building was renovated last uh, there's definitely a need to do that um, and this addresses the needs that the museum has shared with us in order to to bring in first quality art exhibits and this is why we're spending so much time on this because yeah. these are projects that have an impact not only this year but the next year the next year and the next year and we want to make sure that you are first comfortable and then second that you set the priority so yeah. this yeah. is this we're is good to I, and I'm not oh, sure and I'm sure you probably don't have that number now but aren't we on our art museums and all, we're losing about $1.2 million a year. I, I, I thought we were somewhere with all our museums collectively. I know the Children's Museum is hitting home runs, but I think we're taking a bath on those to somewhere to the tune of that. So that, but yeah, we can discuss that later. But yeah, thanks, get that's facts. good. All right. Yeah, that's a big ticket money. item there. Good next, Lord. Next slide. Uh, Russell and yeah. Horace. And these are really IT uh, type um, projects. Good evening, council members, uh, mayor, assistant mayor, city manager, and staff. Um, the IT department has uh, requested the replacement of several very important systems. Um, these systems should have been, most of them should have been replaced long a long time ago. Um, the first one I'd like to talk about is the radio system. And the radio system, um, I'm a listed as one, and that's only for numerical value. These systems are all important. 
very important. The radio system um, was installed in 1987. It's approaching 30 years. Uh, the normal life cycle for radio system is about 20 years. So this radio system is now reaching uh, 10 years over its life expectancy. And um, we, we are requesting that this be replaced. Uh, and we some done of the been aware of this already. I thought we did too. Mary. I thought just last year we had. We, we, we did. Well, yeah. Chief, mm -hmm. can I answer yeah. a question for you? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, this was a three year project actually. We bought $3 million worth of radio last year that we replaced in public safety. Gave them the most modern radios. And did, we intend. Is that correct? They, they did spot out no. in the Churchland no. area? It, it did no. not. It did not, yeah. sir. Okay. It did not. We well, did it, it correct. Was supposed to do that. <laughs> No, well, it didn't. I, know. I mean, what? It, I, that's where it was sold. We were going to fix those areas, yeah. and we didn't want to go to the public. Well, the and whole system, when it gets the redone, whole system, yes. we'll fix it. Uh -huh. But no, that one little step did not do it. And we're plagued too by the fact that this particular, if you want to say, model, is no longer being made by the manufacturer, and because of the technology change that's coming about, and. Uh, so we have to be concerned too about uh, parts. How do you get parts when when pieces, components of your system go down? So this will be. We spend this four. That'll be seven million. And there's another four the there's next year. There's another four next year. It's an eleven million dollar project. 11. But remember, That's gracious. now amortize that over thirty years, and you get a feel. I mean, you got. Don't, don't send this back to the manufacturer. You've got good, good value out of this system. You got 30 years out of it. It had a 20 year life, so you got your money's worth for it. And it's one of those things where you gulp, you know, does it really cost that much? But you get, you get value out of it. And this is a public safety thing, and I'm not trying to. But is this a deferred, uh, I mean, to keep uh, getting into a situation where we got to reach in the your pocketbook and pull out $11 million, could we amortize that uh, with funding to keep it updated uh, as we go along? That's this this uh, is an absolutely new system. When this we get done with it, it takes about two and a half years to build it. Uh, when we get done with it, it'll be a totally new system. It'll be digital where we operate analog today, we'll be operating in a digital environment. All of our neighbors, Norfolk have replaced theirs, uh, 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 Hampton has replaced theirs, Virginia Beach has replaced theirs, Suffolk is in the process of replacing theirs. And one of the things here is compatibility, system compatibility among our neighbors. We have to stay compatible for interoperability. Right. to be able to operate them with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Understand. Okay. Um, uh, the manufacturer actually stopped making parts for the system, our system, in 2011. There are still parts available, and they will repair the system as long as there's parts available. But we can't rely on that for many more years. Mm -hmm. Well, be, being able to communicate with our sister cities uh, is that, 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 that would be very important for the police issue. department, especially mm -hmm. for people to cross the borders. That's essential. No. Yes. And eliminating all dead spots, that's very essential. Oh, well, that's another issue. Uh, well, will that do it? Uh, <laughs> it, it you know, we, <laughs> we had $3 million dollars and, and we were told that that, that would eliminate <laughs> that would the dead it. spots. The are, answer to that is... Are we certain? No. Mm -mm. We're designing the system down, to be citywide coverage and to have the appropriate redundancies and to move what's in the basement next door out to the, the uh, Hampton Roads Regional Jail so that when you think about the worst weather event that we could have, we can still be running. Yeah. We can still be communicating, not only with ourselves, but in a situation like that, we got the state to communicate with, we got the feds to communicate with, we got cities. our neighbors. I understand, but will the officer in Churchland be able to That's, yes, communicate? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the issues that I was going um, 
uh, address was the fact that that system will uh, enhance the coverage in Churchland and we will get rid of that problem forever. Terrific. Uh, we've got the computer-aided dispatching. That's the CAD system. That is the system that the dispatchers actually enter the data as they receive calls from the public. They, they reference that data as they dispatch the police officers on the street. That's a very important system. That system has been in existence since 1994. It's approaching 20 years. Uh, that, that system, it, it, the vendor we bought the system from, uh, for the most part, no longer supports the system. I, I don't say they don't support it, but there's nothing that we can see coming down the road that would lead us to believe that in the future they will be able to support the system. So we would like to move to a new system and the police department and the fire department have looked at these systems and endorsed these systems and uh, we would like to get them approved and move, to, move on to these new systems. Um, the crime analysis system right now today We've got a very old crime analysis system. I don't really know how long. Maybe Chief can uh, give us some insight on that. But that system has been around for a long time. It doesn't integrate with the current CAD system. The new uh, crime analysis system will go out to the new CAD system because they're made by the, ma the same people and draw down data. They could draw out maps of high criminal areas and things like that, they could pull that data right out of the CAD system. So with, with the CAD system, the new CAD system and the crime analysis system, it would bring a whole lot of uh, uh, information together. All right. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Uh, uh, Russell is going to talk about some of the other initiatives. Thank you, Russell. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council. Hi. The system that we're looking at now, the case management is a, um, it's actually called the Virginia Commonwealth Attorney's Information System or VCAS. It's a automatic case management system used by the Commonwealth Attorney. Uh, it is pretty antiquated. It was a system developed by the state over 15 years ago. The state has reduced funding for the CAS over the last several years and the system is now supported by a single programmer out of Virginia Beach on an outdated IBM Lotus Note server. Future plans and enhancements have been dropped on all Commonwealth attorneys have been advised to seek and replace their CAS system and the targeted date for uh, dropping all support is sometime in the year 2013. The Commonwealth Attorney Office has requested that the IT department plan and support the implementation of a new management system. This proposed budget recommendation is to implement this prosecutor software that will log and track activities from the start to final disposition. The system will interface with the police department's criminal record system to share case-related information. The system will support digital storage of images, audio files, other documents, and finally associated anything that was the case where now they're putting them in records and having to pull it out of a drawer somewhere. So the state told them to get a new system, but, in, but, no money. Money. But, 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 but not to give them any money. This is unfunded, you know, and, we're not going to do and, it and anymore it's, it's here. A state, it's a state office, the state, when we get a new system, the state didn't send any money. They're going to send the cities the money. Yeah, that's that's the only way you're going to pay for <laughs> Let's go to this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. You hey. know, uh, one quick question yes. on, on some of these uh, communication improvements, uh, and uh, I guess even with the Commonwealth Attorney, that's a communication improvement. Are there any grants available to offset uh, some of these expenditures? From the state, and, and not not just the state, but some of the uh, equipment that we're going to be buying for public safety. If, if we explore, we'll double check. Okay. Yeah, forfeiture type money. Okay, now the oh, next application, this is a... Cost. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The next application we're looking at replacing the city treasurer and the commissioner revenue 
are requesting the replacement of our taxation and billing systems with a single integrated revenue and collection system. This new integrated system will replace 13 plus standalone systems that include software applications such as business license, personal property assessment, real estate billing, trustee tax, Virginia income tax processing, dog license, cash sharing, and delinquent tax collections. These systems currently generate around $150 million in revenue. The consideration of these tax and billing systems into a single revenue collection system will reduce the need to support and maintain separate applications, software databases. Our current tax and billing <coughs> system uh, communicate with each other on a limited basis, some that were designed over 20 years ago. The tax and billing applications that we have seen in the presentations will bring all of these tax and billing applications under one roof. The goal is to create a central customer information system. This customer information system will allow for our frontline employees to see a total profile of our customers and the receivables due to the city and enhance the service to our customers in a more timely fashion. It will allow the enhancement of current and delinquent collections. The delinquent collections become more efficient when we're doing wage liens, SOD stops, judgments can be done all at the same time for one a delinquent account. Currently we have to execute distressed collections on each application. A payment web portal will interface with these systems to allow for the convenient payment of options. A, pay, a business website will be provided for business license renewals, trustee tax submissions, business personal property submissions and payments. These new online systems will provide and improve options for our customers and businesses to report and renew licenses without having to visit City Hall. All right, cut the light on for a second, um, if I may. Remember last, last week when I briefed you where we get our money from. 80% of our local, of our general fund budget is from money that we collect locally. That's what I was just telling, that's what I was just telling Mr. Moody. At least, at least these guys do bring us money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and this the point is where my money comes from. Yeah. The, 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 the other one um, just costs us money. Is, so, so, but, but, but continue, I'm sorry, go ahead. What happens is that as, think about you have a, a residential house, you have a car, right. you have a boat, uh, you have a, a business license. Each one of these is a separate Entry. database. You're in the computer that way five times. What this does is integrate them all so that when you go up and the, the uh, city employee types in John Rowe, the whole profile comes up. And I might be current on 90%, but 10% uh, I'm delinquent on, and I didn't come there for that delinquent. I don't leave until that delinquency is taken care of. This is a way to do our business better. Uh, it takes money to run this operation. Makes sense. And it's, a, it's fair. Uh, when you levy a tax, you, it's unfair not to collect that tax. It's not fair for the people who have to sit at the kitchen table and decide what they're going to avoid paying to pay their real estate tax rate, and then somebody skate by not <coughs> paying. So this, this is a more efficient way to do it. It's a fair way to do it. Any of the other cities around us have the system? We'll get you a list of the localities in Virginia that... Is there any job savings? Uh, that's too early to tell. Yes. It really is too early to tell. The only reason I ask about the other municipalities is because you won't be the first one out there on a new system. The, the one of the system uh, council makes we did re uh, review is in Virginia. So there is uh, uh, some site visits that we could do. But we don't know whether anybody in Hampton Roads is using it. I don't think they have. I, I don't know that answer, but I know that they're, they're, the company is, uh, has customers in Virginia. We will find out who they are. Okay. Go ahead. Um, just my experience. I'm not saying this system. I'm just saying I know my company spent over $300,000 on one system and it did nothing that they said. That's the only reason I asked. 
Big question. Yeah, I, I, I would I would hope that the treasurer and the commissioner of revenue have checked these yeah. these systems out, yeah. uh, and, and b b before button, they recommended them range. to you, and, and knowing those those guys, I'm I'm pretty sure yeah, they I'm pretty do. sure they have. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point well taken. But yeah. but I, I doubt very seriously they'd actually spend three hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. They haven't they haven't looked into right. it. Our last presentation was about four and a half hours with the company. And we it's went over our list. But, 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 but these guys and, 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 Ms. And, and, our, and our assessor here, they make our money for us. That's right. So, so if we got to spend a little bit of money to, to keep making that money so we, so we can. We need to spend it to so get the stop raise, not raise taxes and other things we're trying not to do. That's right. Um, I, can, I can support that. Well, let's, let's, let's go. go. Next Collect slide. Yeah. Let's get the money. Uh, parking garage. Uh, this is pretty self explanatory. Yeah, this, you want to highlight anything? Yeah, this adds yeah. to the current CIP for uh, concrete yeah. repairs at the uh, County Street Garage, City Hall Garage, as well as some repairs to the first floor uh, to deal with the surface issue down there. Okay. Thank you. All right, and the, the last area is the uh, school. Uh, we have $1.5 million uh, in the CIP for schools, and it breaks out to be, uh, next slide please, a million dollars for the school bus re, uh, replacement uh, program and I briefed you last week on this uh, they'll spec the buses uh, buses will be ordered we write the check um, hopefully this will be the start of totally integrating the school CIP into your CIP so that there's only one CIP and the other is the Debt uh, service payment for next year's uh, payment on the Simon's Dale. Why do we have that in our budget? I thought they were paying the debt. That. Is, no. the, the debt is the city's debt. The schools had paid two years. They paid one million three hundred seventy-five thousand to the city, and that was put into the CIP budget. So this is just transferring back to the city the, what, what's left from what the schools paid. But they, they are, they're not paying any more after the two years that they've already paid us. Mm -hmm. So beyond, beyond um, you know, paying down that, or drawing down that $2,750,000, then the city will be paying the debt service on <clears throat> Simonsdale going forward. Okay. Yeah. But it was always our debt. Well, <laughs> no. Uh, there was some doubt. We tried to go back and recreate re, uh, the transaction. Um, and um, there was some expe expectation that they would have a longer term funding uh, of the debt service, but it's not there. It's not in the record. Is the two years written now? Where are you getting two years from? That's what they actually paid. There was a, um, a, a difference between what the, the city staff thought the agreement was and what the school staff thought the agreement was, and there, there was no, we, we are unable to find any Nothing formalized in agreement. Mm -hmm. No agreement. Uh, there, there was a draft agreement that was never formalized. That's right. We put sixteen million dollars in the CIP to build that school. Yes, we did. And kind of threw everything in a tailspin because of the four million dollars that we had been given to the schools for capital projects. And this Came four up. or five years ago was the issue, and I thought they were supposed to have been handling the debt service. That was my understanding. But it was mine too. So, we got, I didn't. so now we're going to be covering the debt service going forward. And that's what it's going to be on an annual basis? Uh, it actually increases, increases in, uh, in future right. years. How about if we give you the amortization of those of that debt? For what so period of time? Until the debt's paid off. The debt's paid off. Yeah. That's total. Wow. We got an interest fee loan, right, no, no. from uh, the um, Obama administration to be able to, Duty because it was a shovel ready project, we got the 16 million to They're get that American done. Bonds. Right. <coughs> yes, we did. What's the other debt? I don't understand. How much? We need to. You get an interest free that. loan. What we are the other debt services? It. What What other debt are we having to wrestle with there to come up to uh, five? Well, that, the, the bonds didn't get, didn't cover the whole amount of the cost, did they? Yeah, I thought it was the whole thing. I thought it was the, what was it? There's the guy. You were in charge of the thing. <laughs> you were the guy. 
Well, they covered everything, they covered right? It all. Some of the school. The American bonds did. Yes, sir. It they did. did. The QSCAP bonds. It, it covered it. 100 percent of the school construction. So, so, so why that's what it was. And this, Hold on. And this is the bonds are to re Steve. be repaid over 15 years. Uh, they're interest-free bonds, as you stated. There was a agreement drafted that was supposed to be executed between the city and the schools that was never executed. Okay. And the schools did make a payment of a million <coughs> seventy-five, which we're now drawing down on to make the principal payments on this debt. That's true. They made two payments. Oh, they made two payments of one million three seventy-five. So a total of two million seven hundred fifty thousand is what the schools have paid towards the debt service. And there was no agreement initiated. Yeah. yeah. The best, what, the closest. The school board is going to come from the city anyway. There was an agreement that we found that was drafted, <coughs> never executed. There was a memorandum of understanding that was drafted, but it was never executed. How long ago was that? Uh, this was part of the yeah, stimulus funding that we uh, borrowed and used these QSCAP lines to construct the school. Two and a half, three years ago. Yes. 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 I like to see. I like to see a draft copy of that. Okay. <coughs> okay. That's good. All right. Uh, this completes this presentation. We're not going to have any other presentations because we want you to spend time on on understanding the budget, asking us questions, telling us to go get more data. Uh, so you you got you always are in charge, but uh, we meet again tomorrow night. We're going to give you a report on Willett Hall uh, because we've worked hard to get this information. Uh, we'll have that report. That's something that's going to be a milestone. And uh, I think we have one other item, but the rest of the work session tomorrow night is going to answer your questions about the budget. Okay. And I, I encourage you, as you go through the budget, uh, as you have questions, send them to me. And what I'll do, I'll email the, your question and the answer to all your colleagues so that everybody is okay. aware of what, what's on your mind okay. and what you're How looking How soon for. can you get that information on merging those, those health plans? That $3.3 million. Well, it's not the merger where they save the money. That's on the margin. Where they save the money is converting from a fully insured plan to a self-insured plan. Because when you buy an insurance policy, first you're getting more coverage than what you, no matter how you try to tailor it, there's always going to be something at the high end that you really don't need. It's that occurrence that happens one in every 10,000. Plus, on top of that, you're paying a profit to the insurance company. So right off the bat, I'm almost sorry that I talked about the merger because that's not where the real savings is. The real savings is making the conversion from being uh, fully insured to being self-insured. So how soon can we get some information from Mercer or whoever's the guy that put us in a comfort zone that that is a real actual number. I have it tomorrow night for you. I mean, okay. we've got That'd be it. great. That's how we got the, the $3 million okay. and then the 1.5 because, right. I mean, I, it, it's doable. Okay. That's the old-fashioned way of buying insurance, not, okay. not the more efficient way. Okay. A lot of companies do that, uh, large companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Self-insurance. Um, and I've sent you information that you should have received on on Saturday if you have any yes. questions about anything that I send from that point on. Please, Email please. We will. That was good info. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. And Very good thank you for your patience tonight. Yeah. But we covered Richard. some big stuff. Most comprehensive. I don't want you to be surprised when you say, oh, my goodness, John only told us it was $15 million for these filters. No, sir, it's, it's going to be about 25 to $30 million. We want to thank you and but staff, y'all. Yep, You've done absolutely. a great Very job. Very comprehensive. Yep. Yeah. 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 Aren't they great? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I love the way you, they're yes. telling the story. Very much not just you. What? Yeah. yeah. They, they are yeah. really good. They give me goosebumps when I think about how good <laughs> they are. And they All right. Are, good job. We're we'll adjourned. Thank you. Okay. I mean, that, that was, that, that's, that, that, that's, 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 that's